Templates and smart templates in Studio One can be incredibly useful depending on what you do most often. Now, I like to think of all of my songs as terribly unique and built from the ground up. However, there are a bunch of sort of go-to plugins that I often use and some go-to setups that I often use in my songs. Let me show you what I mean. In this very typical setup, as you can see here, I often use addictive drums as my go-to virtual drums plugin. I do use others at times, but this is typically what I'll often use. Now I have every individual drum routed out to its own channel in the mixer in Studio One. You can see all of those here in brown here, okay? So all of the individual drums and the overheads, etc., And they in turn then route through to my drum bus at the end here. Now, one interesting thing about addictive drums is I think it's recorded rather hot or its output is rather hot. So it will often make your tracks clip pretty early on. So what I've done here is I've got all of those outputs and I've adjusted the gain at the top here just to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now all of that in itself takes a little while to set up if you do it every single time. In addition to this, I've got a lot of a lot of other instruments which use a typical setup. So for example, I record stereo acoustic guitar in many, many tracks. I like to record the left and right channels on separate channels, as you can see here, and then I route those through to my, a stereo bus over here for acoustic guitar. And I'll apply some effects at the left and right channel level and some at the bus level over there, okay? The same is true for things like my bass guitar setup, and I also use a, typically this piano here, this Moda um, Piano Tech. I'm forgetting which one it is now. I use it all the time. Uh, this Piano Tech plugin is my sort of go to piano plugin, and I often have piano on my songs. All of those things also make use of some effects buses. You can see those up here. Most of these actually are being used by these vocal channels that I have set up. I've got a lead one here, which uses a delay and reverb and also, we use parallel compression, and I have some backup vocals uh, set up here. They don't tend to use parallel compression um, in my tracks, at least. And I've got those already panned left and right because I like to record my harmonies in stereo. So there's quite a bit of setup there, isn't there? Now, you may have noticed earlier on that there's already some track information here. This one here is what I call my click track. I don't like to play along with the actual metronome. I prefer sort of drum sounds. So I do this as sort of a, an old fashioned way, I guess you would say. I set up my click track here using again, addictive drums. I've got a drumstick count in here. And then I've got a hi-hat, which is there acting as my metro. And of course, I'll need to copy and paste that across the track to get that going. That's easier. Just select that, press D on the keyboard as many times as I want to, and I can cover a whole track um, and create that very, very easily. So as you can see, if I was to set all of this up, if I did it up front, it would be very boring, wouldn't it? And it would just really break my creative flow. But it could take me up to, I don't know, sort of 20 minutes or something, 15, 20 minutes to do all of that and set up all of the plugins. Um, I could do it as I went along, and that's what I used to do. Um, but again, it tends to sort of break your flow a little bit to have to set all these tracks up. So that is why it's so useful that all of this can be created with a template. Now, if I close this down here and go back to the Studio One start page, you can access your user templates, your homemade ones, if you like, by clicking on new at the top here. and by default, you'll go to this templates tab here. This is uh, full of smart templates if you're using Studio One version six onwards. If you're using a previous version, you'll have some sort of styles there. It'll be a little bit different. But where we want to go for your own template is go over to user over here and you can see I've got my template there. If I click on that, um, then it'll load up that template and have everything ready there for me to start creating. Hi folks, I'm Mike. 
and I hope you will. Last week, we discussed track presets on the channel, and they're incredibly useful when you want to get individual tracks going really, really quickly. However, when it's a whole project you want to get going quickly, then definitely templates is the way to go. Now, starting from Studio One version 6, they introduced smart templates, which we'll look at in just a moment. But first of all, I want to show you how you create a template like the one I used at the beginning of the video here. Now, actually, this is the quickest part of the tutorial because it's really super easy to create your own template. When you've got everything organized, in the way you think it's going to be useful to you. Just go up to the file menu at the top, go down to save as template, click on that, and it's going to open up this dialog box. So you can give your template a name, my, uh, let's call it my tem, so I don't have to type too much. Then you can do a subtitle for it and a description. I think the description is super, super useful as you have more templates because it's easier to tell which one is which. Then you can actually add an image to an icon. Okay, so just click on, you know, this uh, browser here. I've got one already prepared. Click on that, and then it's just going to resize it as to the size it needs to be. And that makes it sort of useful, I think, to identify your templates really, really quickly. Then click on OK, and it's going to create that template. Now, if you find after you've created this template that you've got something a little bit wrong with it somewhere along the way, and you want to update it, that's easy. Just go to Replace Existing. It's going to open up to the folder where you've got your template saved. I've got one here. And just click on that. It's going to open up the previous settings and then you can change things here if you want or you can just click OK and it's going to overwrite um, your uh, existing template. Okay, so it's as easy as that to create your templates and then as uh, we saw earlier, if you just go over here to new on the user tab here, you can see your templates. <laughs> Starting from Studio One version six, they introduce smart templates. So if you click to create a new project here, you can see the smart templates under the templates tab here. Now the first three really just create blank projects, so to speak. But if you look further down, you can find the smarter templates if you like. Now there's a couple that I specifically want to mention or there's a few I want to mention. Many of these will get you going with some particular choices you'll make on the right hand side. So for example, if I click on play now, this play now template, you can see there's some choices at the top on the right hand side. Um, am I going to create a piano track or a synth track or a guitar track, etc. So I want to start my project off with a synth track. Now before I go ahead and click on OK, there's some things I want to make sure of. I'll just call this Tests, so I'll give my project a name. You may want to check the path of the project here. It's always worth doing that. And I like to record in 48 kilohertz rather than 44.1. So once you've done all that, you can go ahead and click on OK. So I'll do that. And you can see right away that as well as creating the synth track up here, it's giving me a kind of a tutorial to work through. So it's going to explain the format of the project or the template here. So I can just either work my way through that tutorial and it's going to point out certain things on the screen, or I can go ahead and close it and just start using my template or my project. Let's close that because there's another sort of interesting one that I'd like to show you as well. And this one is useful if you actually use Presonus hardware. Now I've got a Studio 192 interface. You can't see it, it's out of shot here, but it's the kind of uh, template I may want to use for that because with Studio One hardware, um, not all models, but some models give you extra capabilities from within Studio One. So you can actually control uh, certain aspects of the hardware from Studio One without leaving it. So that's where this one comes in useful, yeah? The Presonus interface template, yeah? So obviously you go ahead and select your interface. Mine's a Studio One, sorry, a Studio 192, and it shows that interface there. I you know, adjust my settings as I would normally, and it sets up a whole bunch of channels assigned to the different inputs for that interface and all that good stuff. And it, as I say, it means you can gain access to some of the controls on the audio interface itself from Studio One. As I said earlier, another similar feature which is very useful is track presets. If you don't know what they are or how to use them, then I definitely think you should. Watch that video right here.